Hello, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Today, playing some zombies in Historic Best of Three. Now, this deck that I have in front of me is essentially a mono black zombie list. However, I splashed in a little bit of red, and that has given me access to two cards that I think are going to increase the overall power level of this deck. Going to talk briefly about the deck and then jump into a few games. So with red, I now have access to Embercleave and Dreadhorde Butcher. Dreadhorde Butcher is a 1-1 one, one for 2 zombie warrior with haste that says, whenever Dreadhorde Butcher deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Dreadhorde Butcher. When Dreadhorde Butcher dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Overall, this is just a really so solid zombie creature. We just need to splash a little bit of red to get it in our deck, and it's going to be a big pain for our opponent to deal with if we can get up to 3-3 or four four or even bigger it also works very well with our lords just overall great card and then Embercleave, while we are an aggro deck, we are attacking in, and Embercleave is, of course, the card that you want in most aggro decks. Uh, this thing is super awesome and plays very well with Champion of the Parish. Champion of the Parish is this awesome card that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If the opponent can't deal with it with, like, a Fatal Push or uh, Blood Chief's Thirst, this thing can easily get to, you know, 10-10, 15-15, I've seen it. The problem with it is it gets chump blocked very easily, and, well, if we have a couple of Embercleaves in our deck... Champion of the Parish is going to be smashing through. I'm currently running two in the deck, but I think the deck could easily support three or maybe even four. The rest of the deck is pretty much what you would expect. We have a bit of removal, Dark Salvation, and Fatal Push for, for that. Uh, Dread Wanderer is another great threat on turn one. Got a little bit of card draw with Undead Augur and Crypt Breaker. Uh, Jadar to produce a whole bunch of decayed zombie tokens. That works really well with the Champion of the Perished. And then the already mentioned Lords. For our lands, one copy of Castle Lockwain and high, uh, two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Everything else is just Rakdos lands. In the sideboard, more removal with Fatal Push and Murderous Rider. Got a couple of Lilianas if I want to bring them in. I'm not really sold on this card yet. Um, maybe. I uh, just want to try it out and see how it plays. Haven't had too many chances to get it on the field yet. We got some Hand Disruption with Thought, uh, Thought Seize and Inquisition of Kozilek. And of course, a little bit of Graveyard Hate with Leyline of the Void. So that's the deck. Going to try it out and see how it goes. See you over there. All right, zombie time. Seems like uh, a fair number of you enjoy seeing zombie content. Those videos have been doing pretty well on my channel. So here we go with another take on zombies. I actually really like the zombies in Historic right now, simply because you can play them in so many different ways. Opening hand, we had to mulligan down to six. This one looks okay. Probably... I'm not sure if I want to go Jadar on turn two or Dreadhorde Butcher. We'll see what the opponent's up to first. We're getting some love from our opponent. I don't know what's going on. My uh, emotes sometimes just disappear. It's a real shame. Really wish I could have uh, sent the hearts. So this kind of looks like a bit of ramp from our opponent. Making me think I... You know what? I'm going to go out with Jadar. Start establishing that board, uh, especially with the Undead Augur next turn. The Decayed tokens work especially well with Undead Augur uh, because they die and we get to draw an extra card. Always good. Hopefully they don't have any crazy big surprises for us on turns 5 and 6, though. That's probably an Epiphany. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I think... I'm going to go against what I said. I'm going to put out a Lord, pump up the 2-2, two -two, and then next turn I can go Undead Augur and Dreadhorde Butcher. Just plays on curve a little bit nicer than going out with only the Undead Augur this turn. Okay, opponent down to 16. This is the big turn for them. This will show us what they're up to. Hopefully it's not a Nisa. I don't want to deal with a Nisa. An Archmage's Charm. That's a super good sign. But they shock in a white source. Did not expect that. All right. I th think I'm actually tempted to go out with both Dreadhorde Butchers. Get them up to three threes. And then if they do wipe the board, that's some extra damage. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. If they, these are three threes and they wipe the board, that's an extra six damage that the opponent's going to have to contend with. And they are definitely going to be within lethal range if that's the case. They have Haze of Pollen. Oh, no. All right. Brutal. 
I guess shocking in that hollow fountain was certainly worth it. But a Teferi... It's not too scary. Wow, what's... This is Bant Control? Is that what's happening right now? Okay. Lead on the Undead Augur. They seem to have interaction. Mm. Let's load up that board. <laughs> it might be another Haze of Pollen. I really hope it isn't. Don't, don't just be a... A <laughs> fog deck. Oh, no. Okay, get to draw a card, though. So that's okay. And now with the Undead Augur, if they do wipe the board, we are drawing, what, two, four, six cards? Okay. We can spare that life. It's fine. There's the Epiphany as predicted. So Soda Pop here is on kind of an, an obnoxious deck. That might be another Epiphany. Oh, no. You know what? Historic, don't do this to me. Don't, don't make me sit through this. Well, if we do get another turn and they don't have any more fogs, we're going to have a pretty good attack. Hmm. So, Al runs Epiphany, huh? What a card. What a card. What do people think about it? I I don't play a lot of standard, so I don't see too much of the hate, or I don't I haven't developed too much of the hate yet for it. But according to what I read online, people absolutely hate it for good reason. Uh oh, portable hole on my undead auger. That's brutal. Does that mean they have the follow up board wipe? Oh. Oh no, oh yuck. Doomscar. Or no, it would be Wrath of God. We're playing playing historic here. <laughs> Shatter the sky. Well, we get to draw an extra card at the very least. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this damage on old Teffy here. Really don't want this card ultimating. And with two Haunted Ridges, I have to imagine this game is over. Okay. So, you know what we're up against now. And we can bring in the Inquisitions, the Thought Seizes. We'll probably get rid of the Fatal Pushes because they're not going to do anything. And I honestly think the Dark Salvos are probably not that important either. I kind of don't mind the Lilianas either. Maybe go down... You know, I'm going to go down both Ember Cleaves. I'm really not in the mood to get fogged to death. I wonder if I should have brought in the Murderous Riders for their walkers. Okay. Land's a little awkward. Shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, do I need to Inquisition on turn one? No. I can't, anyways. So I'll go out with the Dragon Skull Summit. Uh, yeah, I probably want to Inquisition. Haze Apollo. Boreal Grazer is really good. Wow, they don't have much, do they? I'm going to take the Ascanta. Put in the castle lockwain. Unfortunate again, unfortunate with the lands being as they are. Okay, this Aboreal Grazer is going to do a really good job at stopping this Dreadhorde Butcher amazingly. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm just gonna go out with three Crypt Breakers and draw a card. Why not? Why not? Okay. Opponent opponent just loses to themselves. Keeping a two-land hand. Hmm. No, I think it's fine. Sure would be nice for zombies to be able to take down a fog deck. 
Oh boy. This here is, this is a risky one. The opponent has taken a mulligan. I like the thoughts he's, I'm going to believe, I believe. I can, ah, this, my deck never betrays me. Right? Need some good fortune from my bat pet, who's not doing anything right now. All right. They multi five, so this thought seize could potentially just ruin them. Okay, miss on the land, that's fine. Thought seize, take the Archmage's charm. So they're digging for action now. They have the opposite problem that I have. Ooh, they found the money draw off the top as Kanta's just gorgeous. What a card. Sure would have been nice if they drew that Fable Passage. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go with the Champion of the Perished Army. Opponent's given us the good game. GG's. Don't know what that means. Okay, must be an epiphany. We hit the land for the Lord. They might have Haze of Pollen. Root Snare. <laughs> so this is I like I like our opponent. Throwing out those preemptive GG's. What a what a good person. And they found the portable hole for our biggest champion. Can't hit the Death Board Baron, thankfully. Could just put out the other Death Baron. Hmm. Dreadhorde Butcher. Going to be more annoying. So they kind of at one if they end up destroying the Dreadhorde Butcher. Which means Liliana might be able to come in and take the win. Getting a nice... Zombies! Go Zombos! The Rakdos Zombies taking down a Fog deck. Ugh. Oh, runs Epiphany. That card, that card, that doesn't do anything. Next game. Alright, game two. Match two. Match two. Always messing them up. Hey, look at the map we're on. I think it'll record. Uh, not really playable. <laughs> Throw that one back. Uh, this hand looks good. Okay, and I think we just get rid of the Dread Wanderer. And have a pretty sweet curve. Look at it. Look at the map. The map is gorgeous. I haven't been able to record on this map for months and months and months. And finally, here it is. Our opponent playing out a Triome. Sure. Let's go out with the Butcher. Get in for three. Start growing the team. What are you up to, opponent? They shock that in. That's not a great sign to me. But undead auger to the field. Force them to do something. Lightning helix. Sure. I'm surprised they lightning helix the butcher. I think I... I don't know. Do you lightning helix the champion? Maybe they have another one for the champion. Okay, it would be real nice to find a lord off the top, I suppose. Wow. Well, I get to draw two cards at the very worst. Useless and equally useless. You... Okie dokie. Uh, so I have been on a bit of a hot streak, uh, winning quite a few games over the last uh, evening. Oh, huh. Time for the time for the variants to kick in and. Kind of take me down a, a few pegs. Vanishing verse exiled. Okay. So this is going to be the Niv Mizzet deck. Put the Dread Wanderer out. I can put the Embercleave on the Dread Wanderer next turn if I'm able to attack with it. But of course they have old fun bag Niv Mizzet reborn. And they found a lot of really, really good cards. Oh, man. Yeah. 
balanced. <laughs> balanced, yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. It's five colors, though. It's very hard to be able to cast Niv Mizzet on turn five with five colors. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this position other than just die, I suppose. I can kill the Niv Mizzet. Doesn't feel like a victory whatsoever. They have. Yeah. I should just pack this one in. I'm never going to get through it. Never going to get through the Scarab God with the Vanishing Burst and the Deafening Clarion in their hands, so just wasting time at this point. So I suppose Thought Seas pretty good in this matchup. Is Inquisition going to be good? It gets the Deafening Clarion, the Lightning Helix, the Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, sure. Fatal Push just seems basically useless in this matchup. I don't even really like the Dark Salvation. I feel like I'm never going to have a board big enough to benefit from minus one, minus one counters. I might just need a couple of Murderous Riders instead to take out things like niv -Mizzet. And maybe go down a couple Dread Wanderers. Do I want the Lilianas? No. All right, this one this one feels like a bit of a rough matchup. Yeah, this is definitely the new hotness. Niv Mizzet just constantly. Um, my friend was he played a little bit and he ran into a bunch of Merfolk one day, but then the other day it's I seem to remember he ran into a bunch of Niv Mizzet decks. So not sure why this is all anybody wants to play now but it is what it is i believe in the zombies i believe they can bounce back and take a victory yeah opening hands fine it's a really soft to the inevitable board wipe that's coming but maybe i can get this champion of the parish big enough that it can get out of the range of certain nastiness. Okay. So that's fun. Fatal push in the Niv Mizzet deck. Sure. Well, that's an okay card. They probably have a Deafening Clarion. <laughs> The game's kind of chugging a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh. You joking. It's just kind of gross, isn't it? You know what? I don't do this often. I'm just going to... I can't be bothered with this one. I'm gonna go on to the next one. That's that's a little bit too brutal. Two fatal pushes, deafening clarion, lightning helix, and vanishing verse in your opening hand. Even though they are on two mana, they have lots of mana. They're gonna find it. Oh man! Ouch! Next one. All right. So, match three. Hopefully, I don't run into nuke the zombies dot deck like the last game. That one was a little obnoxious. Opening hand looks just fine though. Let's see what the opponent is up to. Red. Zombie. Or gobbos. Zombies versus gobbos. I think it's fine to go out with the butcher, start building it up. Next turn if I hit a land, Death Baron's going to be pretty good. I will be surprised if they block here. I am going to attack in with both. I'm kind of fine if they do end up blocking with the Skirt Prospector because this thing is very annoying. Okay. Sure. Interesting. Well, miss on the land, so that sucks, but... They're also super slow over there, and now this Dreadhorde Butcher is going to be obnoxious. Okay. Give me a land. Land would be just insane. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, we get to make a zombie. I always forget to do it like this. Kill their Chieftain and grow the Dreadhorde Butcher ever so slightly. 
Then next turn, probably Death Baron. Although Lord of the Accursed and then set up for a menace attack on the following turn might be a better idea. But we don't even get to that point. Sure. Okay, against goblins. Yeah. I think I am going to bring in one more Fatal Push. Take out one Jadar. You know what? I want both Fatal Pushes. Get rid of one Dread Wanderer too. And try to just run them over again. Hopefully they have a slow start. It's what it is. It is what it is. Okay. Opponent mulliganing a little bit. Down to five. So maybe this Dark Salvation is going to throw them off quite a bit. Lead on the Crypt Breaker, of course. Snoop. Well, I can't do anything about the Snoop, unfortunately. So I think I am just going to go with the Butcher. I'm going to attack with the Butcher, because if they want to give me the Snoop for the Butcher... I'm okay with that, especially when they're at three cards in hand. And next turn, I can Dark Salvation, probably the War Chief now. Both of them are pretty nasty threats, though. I'm not sure. And is the 1 1 zombie really worth it? Should I be. Hang on, maybe I should just be putting out the Dreadhorde Butcher and then Dark Salvation for zero. Or, yeah, X zero. Kill the War Chief because minus three, minus three, and attack in for four. That might actually be better overall. Okay. Always forget. And hopefully this Snoop doesn't hit like a Krenko on the top. That would just be miserable. It's a war chief. Okay. War chief off the top, and now they have an abrade. Okay. I like it. Aggressive opponent. Really wish I hit a land there so I could hold up the fatal push, but I think it's fine. Just going out with the undead auger. Attack in. Yeah, let's just go for it. And then Fatal Push on the Snoop. I probably should have Fatal Pushed the Snoop before that was revealed. Because if that were a Krenko, I probably would have been regretting a lot of decisions made. <laughs> I, I love this art, as far as goblin art goes. I, I like most of the goblin art, but especially like this fella. Might end up fatal pushing one of the war chiefs, depending on how they attack, if they use the abrade to kill one of my creatures. But something, something is definitely getting pushed because next turn is certainly going to be barren and then just go. Okay, so they do decide to go onto the undead auger. Another fatal push, sure. I don't think they can really attack too hard here. <laughs> okay. So let's get rid of the War Chief. Game is chugging. I don't know what's going to going on here. I have to reset it, I guess. Let's get rid of the Snoop. Uh, put in the Undead Augur. Why not? And then do I attack with everybody? They don't, they could just put it in front of that, go down to two. Okay. Let's see. I'd, I think I'd rather put them at two. They go down to one. Interesting. I mean, if you're not going to block these, you may as well block the Crypt Breaker, right? <laughs> Let's see if Muxus can steal the game. Uh, yep. Muxus can steal the game. As far uh, is it going to steal? 
No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, I'm going to survive at one. Unless they do something cute here. I don't know. Muxus, what a card. <laughs> All right, they get the Krenko, sure. And what do they do? Okay. Oh no, they they do get me. I forgot that the god. <laughs> this thing makes something, and uh, they're gonna get me at exactly nine damage. If I had held back the Crypt Breaker, would have been okay. Oh, also, no, I was dead no matter what. The undead auger also kills me. Okay. Why? Oh, they can sack and pump. That's cute, too. All right. Lots of little plays with gobbos here. Yeah, very, very dead. All right. Uh, let me... Let me... <laughs> what do you guys think of Muxus? <laughs> let me know. It's so, so silly that one card can just instantly win the game on the spot like that from, from being so far behind. I could see a card bringing you back into a, an equal position when you're so bar, far behind, you know, like a Wrath of God or something, but to be able to take you from basically being dead to I now win the game and win the game by quite a bit. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not salty though. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I wonder if there was something I could have done to win. Maybe like fatal pushing my own my own Dreadhorde Butcher, for example. Something like that. Ah, what do I do? Okay. I'm going to go out with the Augur and attack in with the Wanderer. It might be an Embercleave win here. Alright, two damage in. All right, there's the Snoop on two. Sure. Mm, that's good. How early are they going to be able to put out a Muxus? Not next turn, but maybe the turn after that. Hmm. And unfortunately, this is going to be three red requirements, so that can't happen next turn. I'm going to have to make a choice between putting out the Embercleave or the Dreadhorde Butcher next turn. Munitions expert on my lord. Okay. Feels bad. That feels good, though. What a good card. If I can find another Champion of the Perished, be super, super sweet. Okay. I wonder if they're blocking with the munitions expert here. Probably not, because I kind of think they might just mux this next turn and win. I don't really want to not attack, though. I'm going to hold back the Dread Wanderer. Maybe just hope their Muxus doesn't hit anything. Oh, there's a Krenko. All right. So goblins, I think, are doing goblin goblin things, and uh, their package is a little bit better than Zombos. We got the cool one drop. I mean, Champion of the Parish is definitely better than most goblin one drops. Skirt Prospector is pretty insane as a one drop, but it does require, you know, sacrificing goblins. It's a big cost, at least. But they have the top end. We don't... Zombies doesn't have that. Could you imagine Zombies had a card that was like... <laughs> Six CMC, look at the top six cards of your library, put all zombies onto the field. <laughs> yeah, that'd be all right. I think I'd be cool with that. 
I can't I can't believe Muxus still exists in the format. It's it's such an obvious mistake of a card. But it's uh, it's still here. They choose not to attack. Okay. Well, the thing is, I, I, I don't know. There's not a whole lot I can do. I don't know. Maybe I get lucky. They don't block properly. I can get a really good Ember Cleave on something. We'll see. It's up to the opponent to lose the game. We've They've certainly won the game. It's It's up to them to lose it. But they just put Goblin, 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 Goblin on each of my creatures, and then they're fine. I will say, nobody expects the Ember Cleave coming out of zombies. <laughs> they might have something. They definitely have the Skirt Prospector, so they basically have infinite mana. I gotta put it on the Champion of the Perished. We get the nice... Is it happening? Come on. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. Oh, I feel like I just robbed a bank. <laughs> so, Embercleave. And that's the reason it's in zombies. It will just win you the game. <laughs> Wrap up. All right, not a bad little performance for the Rakdos zombie list. Uh, I did end up kind of going two and two. There was the second game that I had to end up conceding in the middle of it. I got I was getting beat down by the Gruel deck that I played on Wednesday, actually. But I had to run off and do something quickly. Anyways, the deck's kind of cool, though. It does perform pretty well. And I think the addition of Dreadhorde butcher and especially ember cleave are viable cards the problem is it does require you to really put a lot of rares into your mana base and if you don't already have these rakdos lands it's not really going to be worth uh crafting those just to be able to put in ember cleave and dreadhorde butcher on top of that by going into another color we are losing um, the simple mana base of just all swamps where we could go snow covered swamps throw in faceless haven having those creature lands to kind of close out games is really valuable so that is something to consider still it's something different and as you saw in that last game the surprise of the ember cleave is going to give you so many good vibes uh, you're just going to steal games here and there because who would ever think that we're going to throw an ember cleave onto a champion of the perished they should. Look at the sword he has in his hand. It's massive. It's basically an ember cleave. Anyways, that's zombies. It's fun. All flavors of zombies are cool and historic. I think they're a good tribe to be crafting. There's a lot of rares, but boy, oh boy, are they ever entertaining. That's it for this week. Take care. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>